Welcome back to another episode of Space This Week, the Monday series where we recap all things rocket launches, rocket landings, wink wink, starship development, and all the other stuff relating to spaceflight. Lots of ground to cover this week, as is always the case. Let's kick things off, as we usually do, with Starship News. Starship is an incredible project to be following. For those of you new to this stuff, this rocket is the holy grail of launch vehicles and is something that SpaceX have been working towards since as early as 2005, when they first publicly announced a rocket concept with the capabilities of Starship, that being a vehicle with a fully reusable upper and lower stage, meaning that only the fuel gets thrown away, none of the hardware, something that has never been achieved in history and this will absolutely decimate the industry if SpaceX managed to pull this off. It has been a bit of a bumpy ride. The first full-scale upper-stage Starship crashed on landing in December 2020, and it wasn't until after three more attempts at landing an upper stage did SpaceX finally nail it with Starship SN15. Now, the reason I'm giving this admittedly fairly brief history lesson is because, would you believe it, it's been an entire year since SN15 made its historic landing in May 2021. It really is crazy how time has flown, eh? Now, last week at the launch site, crews were seen hard at work continuing the installation of the new quick disconnect panel, which has replaced the original panel in order to accommodate the slightly higher and slightly differently shaped QD panel on the Starship upper stage for Ship 24 and beyond. This will supply the upper stage with propellant and power, and the arm assembly itself provides support for the rocket while it's on the pad. Now, after the downcomer crush of Booster 7, or I guess after the transfer tube crush, if we're going by what SpaceX seems to have started calling this part internally, we initially thought that that was it for the booster, and it would be scrapped in favour of Booster 8. But then, SpaceX apparently began making repairs to the vehicle. It's unfortunately difficult to tell exactly what they were doing due to the limited viewing angles into the high bay from the public road, but it looked like the crews were definitely fixing something. Well, on Friday, Ryan Hansen Space caught a shot of workers removing what appeared to be sections of scaffolding from inside the tank, indicating that any repair job may be complete very soon. We had hoped to see Booster 7 rolled out of the high bay on Friday morning. Starship Gazer was on the scene, but sadly this was postponed due to thunder and lightning, which of course is very, very frightening. <laughs> Luckily, the thunder and lightning resolved, and a little bit later on, the booster was rolled out and was taken down to the launch site, not the scrapyard or anywhere else, which is pretty much confirmation that SpaceX have indeed repaired the damage and that it all looks set for Booster 7 to be the first booster to perform a flight test. I still think this is somewhat dependent on the FAA though. If they pull through and grant approval for Starship at their next deadline, at the end of this month, or failing that at the end of June, then I think we'll definitely see Booster 7 and Ship 24 make the flight. If the deadline keeps getting pushed back though, then we may end up seeing Booster 7 go the way of Booster 4 and see it get relegated to ground tests only due to the development and completion of newer and better prototypes. There is also the possibility that whatever repair job SpaceX did, it's not going to be enough, and the booster was really just moved out of the high bay to make room for Booster 8 and Ship 24, and we won't really know if the repairs are going to stick until Booster 7 manages a successful cryo test. Ultimately though, it is a good thing that the booster failed during a ground test and not mid-flight, and hopefully it exposed a flaw in either the design or pressure management systems of the booster, which SpaceX can now apply a fix to. Same, really, with all the crashes that SpaceX went through with SN8-11, to before they finally managed to nail things down with SN15. While Booster 7 was busy at the launch site, Ship 24's parts were moved around the high bay in preparation for final nose cone stacking. This should hopefully happen this week. The Starbase tents are starting to show their age in this photo here, looking a little bit grubby now, or maybe it's just the lighting. Either way, their replacement, the Starship factory building, continues to grow at a nice old pace. Here's what it looked like towards the end of last week. The structure is definitely coming together. SpaceX managed to pull off a successful Falcon 9 Starlink mission on Saturday, in which they placed 53 Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit. This was the 12th flight for this particular booster, 1058, which has previously supported a number of Starlink missions, as well as the Crew Demo 2 mission, which of course was the first crewed flight test of the Crew Dragon spacecraft carrying Bob Benken and Doug Hurley to the International Space Station on the first ever human spaceflight from the United States since the retirement of the Space Shuttle in 2011, making this booster quite the historic one. Hopefully it survives its next mission, lucky number 13. 
It seems to have held up pretty well so far, having successfully landed on the drone ship a short fall of Gravitas, about 630 kilometers downrange from the launch site. And speaking of Bob and Doug, SpaceX's fairing recovery vessels are named after them, and on this occasion, it was recovery vessel Doug that fished the fairings from the water. It's so cool to see the rockets get reused like this, and with such reliability that it's now basically routine for SpaceX. It's a shame that no one else really does this. At least Rocket Lab are trying to give SpaceX a good run for their money. Last week, they made their first attempt at making their Electron rocket more in line with Falcon 9, capable of first stage recovery. The normally carbon black Electron sported a sleek silver skin for this flight, though other than that, this was a pretty normal Rocket Lab mission. The Electron placed a number of small satellites for various customers into low Earth orbit. However, the real party piece of this mission came after second stage separation. The first stage fell back to Earth, but rather than crashing into the ocean, it deployed a parachute, whereupon a Rocket Lab helicopter flew in and hooked the descending booster out of the air. This is something Rocket Lab have been preparing for for about two years now, and it's amazing to see them finally pull this off. Now, this isn't the first time that they've recovered an Electron Booster, but this is the first time that they fished it from the air rather than from the ocean. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't perfect. Firstly, the camera angle we got in the live stream wasn't great. It was really hard to see exactly what was happening, and unfortunately, the helicopter pilot felt that the flight characteristics of the caught booster were not as expected, and so as a precaution, the booster was dropped. Don't worry, it still softly landed in the ocean by parachute and was recovered by a support ship. Peter Beck informed us on Twitter that the rocket's heat shield held up nicely, and he also shared this footage of the cockpit of the helicopter during the catch attempt itself. He also confirmed that Rocket Lab are apparently going to attempt a reflight of this booster, stating that the engines are going to head back to space. He reckons, at least. Hopefully this isn't like Elon saying that SpaceX might fly SN15 again, but we'll have to wait and see. Don't worry about the engines in this shot, by the way. They're not bent or anything. The engines have gimbaling, which is the ability to move around in order to steer the rocket, and this is just them at rest. Overall, this mission was a huge achievement for Rocket Lab, and I can't wait to see them nail this process down as they keep on making attempts. Their next mission is also looking like a great one to watch out for. Currently planned for the 27th of May, this will be their Photon mission, which will see their space tug Photon take NASA's capstone CubeSat all the way to the moon. Rocket Lab's ultimate aim with Photon is to use it for an interplanetary mission to Venus in 2023, delivering a laser-tunable mass spectrometer into the Venusian atmosphere. I'll talk more about Photon as the capstone mission date approaches, so do make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on this. And remember to give the video a little like if you are enjoying the journey so far. It's great to see Rocket Lab go head-to-head -head with the innovations of SpaceX's Falcon 9, and of course, it's worth remembering that they're also working on Neutron, which while not 100% reusable, does have an expendable second stage that so cheap that it should be a financial competitor for Starship. Now, over in China on Thursday, a Long March 2D rocket carried seven Jilin-1 GFN satellites and one Julin-1 Kuanfu satellite to low Earth orbit. The Kuanfu is an Earth observation satellite built by Changguang Satellite Technology Corporation and will be used to obtain panchromatic and multispectral images with large width and high resolution and provide the remote sensing services for smart city construction, territorial and mineral resources exploration, in the company's words. The seven Jilin-1 GFN satellites are high-res remote sensing satellites that will offer high-resolution remote sensing information and images. State media confirmed that all eight satellites made it to orbit and are now fully operational. After spending 177 days in orbit, the crew of NASA's SpaceX Crew-3 mission successfully splashed down on Friday off the Florida coast in the Gulf of Mexico aboard the Dragon Endurance spacecraft. The Crew-3 astronauts consist of NASA astronauts Kayla Barron, Raja Chari, and Tom Marshburn, and ESA astronaut Matthias Mora. Throughout their stay aboard the International Space Station, they contributed to a whole host of science and maintenance activities, as well as numerous technology demonstrations. They also conducted three spacewalks in total, performing vital station maintenance and upgrades to the ISS exterior. They're all now safe and dry back on land, and the Endurance spacecraft was sent off to Florida for inspection and processing at SpaceX's Dragon Lair, the processing facility where engineers examine the capsule's data and performance throughout its flight. While we're on the subject of commercial crew space capsules, the ever-delayed Boeing Starliner has faced another mishap this week. The spacecraft began rolling towards the launch site for stacking for its second attempt at launching into space and docking with the International Space Station. But it ran into yet another issue during the transportation. Something appeared to literally just fall off the side of the capsule. 
This caused the whole convoy to stop and assess the issue before carrying on with the journey to Space Launch Complex 41 in Cape Canaveral. Boeing did later state that this isn't as bad as it seems and that the piece that fell off was just a protective window cover. So all in all, this doesn't seem like a terribly serious problem, but of course this isn't going to do any favours for Starliner's pretty rough reputation. Hopefully things can start going better for Boeing and we can finally see another commercial crew capsule launch from America. Competition is always a good thing after all. I would like to take a moment to thank my Patreon and channel members who help make this content possible. If you'd like to join the list of names on screen then you can sign up to either program using the links below or via the Patreon card on screen. Members get frequent early access to videos and some behind the scenes content as well, so check it out if that all sounds interesting to you. Otherwise there are two video suggestions on screen that are from my channel, hopefully they're good picks. Thank you once again so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.